Send forth your Spirit, Lord, your Holy Spirit, Lord of life. Send forth your Spirit, Lord, bring earth to life anew. Send forth your Spirit, Lord, your Holy Spirit, Lord of life. Send forth your Spirit, Lord, bring earth to life anew. I will bless you, Lord. Lord God, how great you are. You created everything. You fill the earth with all you make. Send forth your Spirit, Lord, your Holy Spirit, Lord of life. Send forth your Spirit, Lord, bring earth to life anew. Without your Spirit, Lord, we return to
the second reading for Trinity Sunday from St Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends with the words of a blessing that we will all know and recognise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. These are simple words. They express for us the ever-present love of one God who is three persons. It's often said that it's difficult to understand the Trinity. The difficulty that we have lies in the weakness of human language and thought to grasp the wonder and mystery of God. Sometimes, perhaps, it's hard for us to realise the utter majesty of God in comparison to our own situation. Accepting this is an important step on our journey of faith. In the final analysis, God is beyond our language and thought. And because this is how God is, we can begin to catch a glimpse of God's ever-present love. God is not bound by any boundaries that we might wish to put upon him. God is. There is no time in God. God's love is expressed in all that he creates, and the word that he speaks, which brings all things into being, becomes flesh in the person of Jesus. The word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, St John writes in the Gospel. This is an act of God's love. As Jesus tells Nicodemus in today's Gospel, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son. The love that exists between Father and Son, love so great that the Holy Spirit is person, is also gift to us and for us, as we celebrated last Sunday, Pentecost Day. How amazing and comforting it is to think that through baptism we are called to live every moment in the love that exists in God, the love that is present in these three persons. The love of God, the grace, love of God poured out for us of our Lord Jesus Christ. The fellowship, love that is within us, empowering us and prompting us of the Holy Spirit. All is love. May we know the love of the Trinity. Live our lives in this love, not only for ourselves, but so that we can bring the experience of this love and life to our brothers and sisters.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of love. God is love. And in this feast day of the Trinity, we celebrate the love that is the community that is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And appropriate that today we celebrate too with Deacon David and Barb, their 40th wedding anniversary. And this Mass is offered for them and with them and their family. We think of love at a time where in parts of our world there seems to be an absence of love. And I think particularly of what's been happening in the United States. For those times where in our lives there is an absence of love. For those times in our world where love is not obvious. And for those times in our relationships when we fail to love, we ask for forgiveness. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification. Make known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing our faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn our world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because they have refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, it was with some laughter that I read the St. Wilfrid's Parish Burgess Hill newsletter earlier today. In it, Father Rick reminds me of a wonderful wise priest, Father Ed O'Shea, who says of the Feast of the Trinity that, well, if you are going to preach, preach briefly because it's so easy to fall into heresy. And indeed, in the early centuries of the church, early Christians, the early leaders of the church, disputed heatedly about how we should make sense of, interpret the Trinity. And various heresies were declared along the way. The monastic theology slightly later, decided that one way of looking at the Trinity, one image that we can use, is that of a community of love. The love between God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And that this love is something outward-looking, is something creative. And so as we look at ourselves, 
as a community of the Trinity, as a community of love. We should see and experience ourselves as being better for those around us, those among us who love us and support us. And there's a beautiful image of marriage and family life as a relationship too. And that's what Dave and Barb are celebrating today. The second thing that the monastics kind of thought about the Trinity was that not just was it a community of love, but it was a community of equality. And we have to use that to measure up what's happening in our world where love and equality seem banished and seem so very far away. Again, if we ourselves are a community of love and of equality, we are not silent in the face of inequality and discrimination and injustice. And we've seen that recently with the murder of George Floyd. And not just that we are silent, but we scream, we cry out with our lives, and we denounce where love and equality and justice have been banished, wherever that may be. We are a community of Trinity that is love and is equality. St. Elred of Riveau, a 12th century Cistercian abbot, looked around his monks when they were gathered together in choir, and he realised that he loved each and every one of them. And he realised that seeing them gathered together in their Abbey Church in prayer, that they reminded him of that trinity, that community of love and equality. So for us, whenever it is that we are all gathered together again in this church, whenever we feel safe and secure enough to be able to do that, Let's pray that when we do, we take a moment, we look around us at all of us who were reunited and gathered here again. And like Elred, we smile gently, knowing that we love each and every one around us. And that as we look around us, basking in, and celebrating that love, we realise that we are experiencing something of that love of the Trinity, of Father, Son and Holy Spirit.
So my sisters and brothers, let's pray that this, our offering, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fruit of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, with all clergy and religious, and with your entire people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Paul, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. And so we pray together as Jesus has shown us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await to the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And so now we pray together and we pray especially for God's blessing on Bob and on Dave. We praise you, O God. We bless you, creator of all things, who in the beginning made man and woman, that they might form a communion of life and love. We give you thanks for graciously blessing Barb and Dave on their 40th wedding anniversary. May this day give them an opportunity to present for us an image of God who is Trinity, who is community of love and equality for us. 
look with kindness upon them today. And just as you have sustained their relationship and their love amid joys and amid struggles, renew their marriage covenant each day. Increase their love and strengthen in them the bond of peace, so that together with their circle of family and friends to surround them, they may forever enjoy your blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So Barb and Dave, you are squirrelled away in your home and we cannot see you. But to Barb, you may kiss your wonderful groom and to Dave, you may kiss your wonderful bride. Congratulations and have a beautiful, wonderful day. Well done. Our final hymn is Walk in the Light. Uh, I think it's one of those Marmite hymns. You either love it or you hate it. Hopefully we will all love it because it was one of the hymns that Barb and Dave celebrated at their wedding, on their wedding day. So heartily we sing along with you to walk in the light. Thank you everyone. <laughs>